What would be the surface temperature of Venus if it had a pure nitrogen atmosphere? In other words, what would be the temperature without any greenhouse gas? Some say that the greenhouse effect is why the surface of Venus is so hot, a sizzling 462 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough to melt lead, hotter than the planet Mercury, which is several million miles closer to the sun. The heat on Venus is jacked up, but is it really carbon dioxide to blame? Until mid-2019, I believed in the greenhouse effect. It all made sense. For 40 years, to me, it was clever science. However, the more I dug into the subject, the more it seemed that temperature was ignoring CO2. History has plenty of examples of CO2 going one way and temperature going the other way. In fact, the times that CO2 and temperature were going in the same direction were scarce enough to make it seem accidental correlation instead of cause and effect. Some say that Earth is not frozen because of the greenhouse effect. The formula to calculate the temperature of a planet without an atmosphere is like this. This is sometimes called the effective temperature equation. For Earth, this yields an effective temperature of 255 degrees Kelvin or minus 18 degrees Celsius. That's 18 degrees Celsius below freezing. Scientists like to use degrees Kelvin because it is an absolute temperature scale with no negative values. The coldest possible temperature is zero degrees Kelvin, water freezes at 273 degrees Kelvin, and Earth's current temperature is close to 288 degrees Kelvin, or 15 degrees Celsius. On Earth, between the effective temperature and the actual temperature is a difference of about 33 degrees Kelvin. To answer our initial question, we need to understand a few things about our own atmosphere. You're likely familiar with the idea that as you go up in altitude, the air gets colder, a certain number of degrees per unit of linear measurement upward, like degrees Celsius per kilometer or degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet. This effect is called the lapse rate. On Earth, this value changes depending on a number of conditions, but the standard environmental lapse rate is set at 6.49 degrees Kelvin per kilometer, 3.56 degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet. So if the surface temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, 59 degrees Fahrenheit, and we go up 3,000 meters, it's 9,843 feet, the air temperature will be about minus 5 degrees Celsius. 23 degrees Fahrenheit. But the opposite effect occurs too. If you go down in altitude, it gets warmer. This is because more of the atmosphere's heat energy is concentrated lower in the atmospheric column. During the Mycenaean salinity crisis, 5.9 to 5.33 million years ago, the Mediterranean was a three kilometer deep desert. At the bottom of that broad valley, the summer temperature was estimated to have been 80 degrees Celsius. That's 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Crossing that desert during the summer would have been virtually impossible, killing everything that attempted that journey. The specific heat of carbon dioxide for constant pressure, C sub P, is 0.844 kilojoules per kilogram degree Kelvin. The same value for nitrogen is 1.04. This is the amount of heat that must be applied to one kilogram of a substance for it to increase its temperature by one degree Celsius. This shows that nitrogen has a slightly greater heat capacity than CO2. For liquid water, this value is much higher at 4.182. A pure nitrogen atmosphere would warm up more slowly than one of carbon dioxide, but it would also take slightly more effort to cool down the nitrogen. The simplest lapse rate, the dry adiabatic lapse rate of an atmosphere, depends on two factors, specific heat of the constituent gases and the strength of the gravitational field. Notice that the absorption and emission spectra of CO2 is not included. In other words, the greenhouse effect has nothing to do with lapse rate. Lapse rate will still work when there are no greenhouse gases. Let's walk through this with an example. 
Starting high in the Venusian atmosphere at the tropopause, the temperature is about 236 degrees Kelvin. That's very cold. That's at an altitude of about 90 kilometers, with an air pressure of about 0.1 bar, or close to one-tenth of an atmosphere. The calculated dry adiabatic lapse rate for Venus is about 10.42 degrees Celsius per kilometer. With an atmospheric column of about 90 kilometers, our rough calculation gives us a surface temperature that is 937.8 degrees Celsius, or Kelvin, higher than our tropopause temperature of 236 degrees Kelvin. This equals about 1,174 degrees Kelvin. According to a paper by D.O. Staley in 1970, we cannot use the simple standard lapse rate formula because the extreme heat and pressure in the Venusian atmosphere change things dramatically. We no longer have an ideal gas or anything close to it. The actual surface temperature is much closer to 735 degrees Kelvin, 462 degrees Celsius. The more rigorous calculations to achieve the correct but varying lapse rates for Venus with the changing temperatures and pressures with altitude are beyond the scope of this video. But the point is this, the lapse rate does not stop working because there is no greenhouse gas. The deeper the atmospheric column, the higher the temperature at the bottom of that column. No greenhouse gas required. The atmosphere is a thermal reservoir, and the distribution of that thermal energy is lopsided. More of it is concentrated toward the center of the planet's gravitational field, near or below the surface. Does the greenhouse effect still exist? Of course it does. All matter absorbs and emits electromagnetic radiation. Does it affect the surface temperature of the planet? Perhaps and perhaps not. We don't know. The effect is tiny if it exists at all. CO2 climate sensitivity. On the flip side, if we insist that the difference between the effective temperature, T sub E, and the actual surface temperature, T sub O, is caused entirely by the greenhouse effect, we would need a CO2 climate sensitivity of 26.55 degrees Celsius per doubling of CO2. And this truly would show up in our climate record if it were true. With our Holocene CO2 increase from 180 parts per million to 360 parts per million, we most assuredly did not witness a temperature increase of 26.55 degrees Celsius in the last 15,000 years. The global temperature increase was certainly less than 10 degrees Celsius, and very likely less than 4 or 5 degrees Celsius globally. We didn't have thermometers all over the planet back then, so we can only guess, but it's an educated guess. From here at the top of the Venusian atmosphere to here at the surface of our sister planet, something is warming things up by about 471 degrees Celsius. So far, there is no way to test the greenhouse climate sensitivity. Everyone on both sides of this debate are merely guessing. No one knows. With a climate sensitivity of 0.3 degrees Celsius of warming per doubling of CO2, suggested by Dr. Richard Lindzen of MIT, only 5.32 degrees Celsius of the surface temperature can be attributed to the greenhouse effect. If we go as high as 6 degrees Celsius per doubling of CO2, suggested by some extreme warming alarmists, only 106 degrees Celsius of the surface temperature can be attributed to the greenhouse effect. This still falls far short of the actual surface temperature. On Venus, we have 17.74 doublings of CO2 to get from the Earth equivalent partial pressure of CO2, 4.053 times 10 to the minus 4 bar, equivalent to Earth's 400 parts per million, to the surface CO2 partial pressure of 88.78 bar. To find the number of doublings, we merely take the surface pressure divided by the starting pressure and then take the base 2 logarithm. To get the total temperature increase, we merely multiply this by the actual CO2 climate sensitivity. Here's our takeaway. The greenhouse effect cannot be the reason for the surface heat on Venus, and it cannot be the reason for Earth's escape from freezing. The thermal content of a thick atmosphere biased toward the surface by gravity 
This is the reason for the increased temperature. The greenhouse effect has either very little to do with this or it has no effect at all. Based on the evidence and this reasoning, I'm beginning to suspect that the greenhouse effect in the atmosphere at large may be a phantom. Understanding the increase with lapse rate. Imagine an atmosphere being homogeneous. The sunlight hits the planet, warms up the surface, and keeps warming up all that air until the atmospheric system reaches thermal equilibrium. In other words, until there is as much energy going into the planet as there is going out. This is when the surface temperature finds its happy place. The fluctuations around this happy medium are called natural variability. But an atmosphere is not homogeneous. Gravity concentrates more of its mass, density, and heat energy toward the bottom of the atmospheric column. And this is why Venus is so hot with such a thick atmosphere. Any thick atmosphere, even one made entirely of nitrogen, would be far warmer at the surface, just like Venus.